Welcome to the odor setback video. The goal of this video is to discuss siting of animal production facilities and introduce you to setback tools to help animal producers, neighbors, and local or state zoning officials assess the impact of odors from animal feeding operations. <laughs> Odors generated at and emitted from animal feeding operations can impact neighbors and nearby public areas. One common question that owners ask is how far away should I site or locate my animal operation from a residence to avoid a nuisance or annoyance because of odor or airborne emissions. My name is Larry Jacobson. I am a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota. This video will discuss siting of animal production facilities and tools that can assist stakeholders in this important process. The air coming from an animal building exhaust fan or moving across a manure storage basin will contain odor. Under the right atmospheric conditions, odors can travel to nearby neighbors or public areas and annoy or negatively impact individuals living or working there. The amount of odor, although difficult to quantify, can be measured using a device called an olfactometer and a trained panelist. In the late 1990s, the University of Minnesota Air Quality Research Group made many odor emission measurements from various animal buildings and manure storage facilities in Minnesota. The results were tabulated by animal species based on the area or footprint of the building or manure storage. These odor emissions were inserted into an air dispersion model with Minnesota weather data to estimate odor concentrations at various distances from the animal facilities. A non-offensive odor concentration threshold was defined as a faint odor. This threshold defined a boundary between non-annoyance and annoyance for most people. The annoyance frequencies were determined over the eight-month time period from April through November when odor issues are of concern in Minnesota. This resulted in what became the Odor from Feedlot Separation Estimation Tool, or Offset Model. This model or tool can be used to estimate the frequency of an annoying odor or the non-annoying complement at given distances from an existing or planned animal production facility. Offset can be used to assist siting of animal production facilities or a residence to reduce the impact of odor from animal feeding operations. It can also be used to help establish setback distances for counties or other units of government. <laughs> Offset can also be used to assess the benefit of certain odor control technologies like biofilters and covers. Control technologies reduced odor emissions from buildings or manure storages, which lowers the setback distance of an animal operation while still maintaining non-annoying odor levels at the nearest residence. Although the tool only estimates non-annoying frequencies, it is based on actual measurements taken in the field and uses known dispersion modeling techniques that have been used in many other applications. A key advantage of offset is that it can be used before a facility is built, so changes can be made before rather than after construction. Researchers and extension engineers at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln modified the offset model for use in Nebraska. We visited with Dr. Rick Stoll, who is a faculty member at the University of Nebraska and helped develop the Nebraska setback tool to learn about the changes they made. In Nebraska, we have uh, part of the state is in the high plains, the western part, and uh, the eastern half is a much more humid um, Midwest, typical Midwest climate. And so we wanted to capture the uh, real and, uh, and probably larger perceived differences in climate and that's why we picked six regions across the state. In terms of similarities and differences with offset and, and the odor footprint tool, uh, similarities are we're using the same uh, odor information, the same database of, of odor studies, 
and we're also using information that's been collected at Minnesota and other states on odor control. In terms of differences, the main differences are we're using a different dispersion model. Uh, so some of the scaling factors and, and inputs are different. Um, but mainly we're, we're looking at uh, having different regions and regionalizing our, our output and also having uh, four directions, uh, four sets of results instead of just one. But we know that odor, there's a air drainage and that odor will settle in valleys. And so what we do is, uh, as producers or users of the tool are, are uh, entering input, they enter in if there's any uh, unusual terrain or topography in the area. And then afterwards, uh, they're reminded that that terrain is there. And so they're, they uh, are given some information to adjust the results based on terrain that might exist in certain directions. Offset and oft use similar approaches to estimate the odor impact of livestock operations on nearby neighbors and public areas. Dr. Steve Hoff, a faculty member at Iowa State University, developed a community assessment model called CAM. We asked Dr. Hoff to tell us about CAM and its unique approach for assessing emissions from swine operations in Iowa. We encountered several situations where we had communities with multiple neighbors or receptors and multiple swine sources and we just wanted to develop a procedure that could account for these multiple receptors and multiple sources in localized regions here in Iowa. The major difference is that number one, CAM is a receptor-based model so we are always looking at the odor load to a receptor rather than um, odor footprints, if you will, around sources. Um, and the other thing that makes it unique is that we use uh, very localized conditions. So we're, we're looking at localized weather data at various locations around the state. There are different odor setback models or tools that have been developed and are being used in the Midwest. These models and tools help answer the question of how far away does one need to locate animal production units from a neighbor to avoid an annoyance or nuisance event. Although different approaches are being used, all of the tools mentioned are helping producers, neighbors, and other stakeholders answer this difficult and sometimes combative question. For more information about setbacks and air emissions from animal feeding operations, you are encouraged to visit the Air Quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website. There you will find videos, fact sheets, and archived webinars.